Okay, in this video, we're going to calculate uh, velocity from some acceleration data. And specifically, I have some acceleration data, some vibration when a uh, train passed by a bridge uh, where I was recording that with an NDAC sensor. So first, uh, using the vibration data toolbox, we have to pull in that data. And so I have a CSV file with the three axes of acceleration. takes a second for it to, to load this in and then it's going to ask me uh, to specify per each column of data what I want to give uh, as a variable which I've already done this uh, before in, in, in the CSV file I have time x y z and I calculated a, a resultant uh, so but I'll just focus here on so now I have my, my four variables, or my five variables, uh, time, x, y, z, and the resultant. So first, let's just show you, uh, you know, the, what this data looks like. Actually, no, I don't need to do that. I will go first into integrating the data uh, for displacement. And so you get this box, and you say you want to double integrate. And here you go. You need to make a two-column uh, matrix for the toolbox. The y-axis was in the direction of the road, so perpendicular to the bridge, so kind of as the bridge rocking back and forth. Z would be the bridge kind of bouncing up and down. Both were pretty significant. I'll start with the Z, and I'm going to have no, uh, you know, trend removal here, and I'm just going to do this calculation. Here is the acceleration data and then the integrated velocity and the double integrated displacement. You see there's, there's clearly some error and uh, some drift, and that kind of gets worse and worse over time. So we want to get rid of that, which we can do here. Um, well, first we'll do just a little high pass filter of the y-axis just to get rid of anything. Everything over one hertz will go through, and we'll just remove a first order trend. Um, from the acceleration to uh, velocity, and then we'll remove another first order trend for displacement. And recalculate it, and now we have something which looks a little bit more realistic, seeing max velocity, you know, at in the uh, two inches per second area, and displacing the bridge up and down, you know, to uh, 20 hundredths or two hundredths of an inch, 20 thou. That was the Z axis. And if I want to do that in the Y, this is kind of the bridge rocking uh, in the direction of the road. That's here. Uh, and it's actually pretty, it's a little more significant. Uh, and that's, that's, again, the bridge kind of uh, going in and out uh, perpendicular to, to the uh, to the train passing by. So let's make a, I'll save this here. This is double integration of the Z. This is double integration of the, oh, sorry, what did I do? Yeah, this is, that was double integration of the Z. This is double integration of the Y. Just for kicks, we'll do the X which is kind of the direction of the train. And interestingly enough, the acceleration levels are quite a bit lower, but you see the velocity is actually quite a bit higher. So we'll see if that's right when we do this in the frequency domain. Double integration of the x. All right. So that was just straight integrating the data. Now let's calculate it in another way or two here. We're going to instead, as a different approach, calculate power spectral densities. We use the frequency domain. We'll do the t, the x-axis. 
one to 2000 Hertz. Uh, we'll calculate this PSD. It's quite a bit noisy, but you see it's actually got a, some decent, uh, decent acceleration, decent uh, energy in, in low frequencies, you know, 20 Hertz or so. I'll clean this up just a tad, go to uh, closer to a one Hertz. Bin, PSD X, save, the Y axis, PSD Y, and the Z axis, PSD Z. Okay. Now, I'm going to convert these power spectral densities. These are somewhat clean, but I want it to look cleaner in a uh, logarithmic spacing, you know, in a typical log-log uh, format of a power spectral density. So you can specify that spacing with uh, these different octave formats. So it's, you know, if I do one six, it's saying every data point will be uh, Multiple, the next one will be times 2 raised to the 1 6th or 2 raised to the 1 12th. We'll do 2 raised to the 1 12th. We'll do the X and we'll go from 1 to 2000. We have that much nicer. Well, it jumps pretty. Why does it start so high? Yeah, let's do. Let's actually do. Uh, We'll do this one. Okay. So there's the octave. So that's the X. And again, you have a peak at that 20, 25 hertz area uh, in the X axis. The Y. Okay, now we can take these power spectral densities we've calculated and uh, calculate from those a velocity and acceleration, uh, velocity and displacement power spectral density. So I'm going to do the PSD, X, and the octave, 1 to 2000. Here's acceleration, and velocity is 0.149 in the X, and uh, displacement is, uh, you know, pretty low, one thousandth of an inch. Uh, I'll save the velocity X. Okay, here's the Y. You see the Y is moving a little bit more, which is a little different from what we saw when we just did the straight integration, which maybe is an indication there was some error there. And the Z, uh, here. Okay. All right, now let's quickly take a look at what our three velocities uh, looked like in power spectral densities, multiple curves, plot. Okay. So they all have actually pretty similar velocities, which let's pull up the uh, the 
picture from when we did the double integration, which didn't quite show that. So what is right? y-axis, here's the z-axis. So looking at power spectral densities, one would say they should have similar velocities where maybe the y-axis is the highest. When we did our calculation before, the x-axis was higher. Oh no, oh, well, the y-axis was higher. Sorry, I was confused. So that's about right, that's good. Uh, this is the Z, it's about the same as the X, or the, or about, yeah, it's about the same as the X, there's a little peak in here, uh, you know, kind of half a second in, but for the rest of it, it's, a, it's maxing out at about one inch uh, amplitude, uh, one inches per second amplitude, uh, which is same in the X axis, but the Y axis is, is pretty, uh, you know, noticeably higher throughout. And we see that in, in uh, the double integration. So the double integration looks like it's about, about right. But what is interesting is if you look at the acceleration data between the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis, the y-axis was more significant, uh, but, you know, and the, but the, the z-axis was also quite a bit higher than uh, what we see in, in the x and but when you, you double integrate the velocities are about about the same so now we're going to do another thing which is normally used in actually let's just compare i'm going to save this um PSD velocity i'm just going to save the y and uh Or just take a look at the acceleration, PSD, there we go. So what am I trying to show here? Really the, the thing I'm trying to show is that because the when we're integrating, the lower frequencies have a larger and larger impact of what's happening. So, um, you know, although the z-axis clearly has a peak over here at, at 1,000 hertz as the, 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 that I-beam kind of rattles up and down, it doesn't really translate into, into all that much motion um, because it's such a higher frequency. And when the x-axis, um, you know, the direction of the bridge kind of matches, matches that. So. Now I'm going to jump in and look at a uh, pseudo response spectrum. So this is kind of like what was the maximum velocity that and how much damage could that have induced? When you do shock testing, you look at the shock response spectrum and the pseudo velocity is your friend. All right. So this is the x-axis. The x-axis acceleration response spectrum and then integrated to the pseudo velocity response spectrum which is pretty flat and then uh, displacement. So we'll save, we'll save this as, and this is, by the way, it's not, this isn't very high. Um, Normally you get concerned about 100 inches per second that we're talking about one inch per second uh, velocity, which again corresponds pretty, pretty closely to what we saw, by the way, here uh, when we did the double integration was kind of that peak of around an inch per second was what the most um, was seen throughout that recording. And the other nice thing here is we can find what was the highest uh, displacement. Well, no, we don't really want to do that. So, all right, so that was a pseudo velocity the, the x, now here's the y. We see actually a pretty interesting, yeah, 
So on the y-axis, uh, there's a peak here, uh, a pseudo velocity of, of you know, 10 uh, inches per second, which is which is noteworthy. Uh, but generally, you're seeing around that kind of peak of, of or, or kind of constant at two it. Let's look at about the four coordinate plot. You know, two or three inches per second, which corresponds to when we just did the double integration. You know, we see that peaks of two. Now, what this is showing us, though, here in the pseudo response, pseudo velocity shock response spectrum, is that we, if we did have a natural frequency of our system at uh, 22 hertz or so, it's going to be magnifying that uh, that input uh, from the from the bridge vibrating and, and kind of magnify that. So we've got to be aware of that as we're designing a system. And but you know, 10 or 20 inches per second doesn't really scare anybody. Z. Again, you see about. I'm pretty surprised actually. The z-axis sees a big jump there. Uh, similarly. Uh, but generally, throughout, it's it's at that kind of one inch per second again, uh, which is what we saw in the z-axis, um, one or two inches per second, you know, um, throughout that recording. And we will quickly generate a plot comparing them. Where is that window? So many plot windows up here, which is sometimes a little overwhelming. Okay, what did I save all these as? PS, X, and PS. All right, so with that, you see generally, you know, your system, if uh, had a, depending on the natural frequency of your system, how it would kind of amplify that, that input. And in the x-axis and y-axis and z-axis, all around that 22 hertz would be magnifying the pseudo uh, velocity, which is, corresponds directly with uh, strain and fatigue in, in a material. But generally, we're well below 100 inches per second, so it's not much to worry about. And you can kind of see, too, that these peaks somewhat correspond with um, when we just double integrated uh, the data. Or maybe not the peaks, but, but at least the plateaus. Um, you know, here we kind of have a plateau, if you will, around uh, two-ish. I might be, might be dreaming that it's there. Maybe if I, yeah. Um, okay, well hopefully this was helpful. Three different ways to calculate velocity. One just, just double integrating, another one going through uh, the frequency domain, and the third using the pseudo velocity, which honestly is probably best for, for characterizing shocks, but there's still some value in, in using it in uh, vibration. Uh, all right, thank you, have fun.